Welcome back to Freakier Things, where we look at the stories of the afterlife and everything else. Sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. My name's Quick, and I'm grateful to share the story from Kimberly F. She was actually shot in the chest when she was at young age. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Now let's get into it. I was shot on May 8th, 1982, at the age of 12. I was shot in the right chest at 4 feet range with a 410 gauge shotgun. The reason I was shot is that a 17 year old who I was renting a room from, the woman whose daughter I was staying the night with, wanted something from this 12 year old I was not prepared to give. When I fought him, it angered him, and the shooting was a result. I was shot, I got up and walked out of the house and into the yard to sit down in the Miss Jen's car. The friend's mother was watching it at the time and had a look of sheer horror on her face when she saw me. I told her to call my daddy because Bobby Joe had just shot me. I sat down in the back seat and waited for the ambulance. When the ambulance arrived, they rushed me to the next town, the nearest hospital, where they told my daddy I would never survive this life flight because I lost too much blood. Needless to say, if you knew my daddy, you would understand why. They put me on a life flight and flew me to her main hospital in Houston. I never once lost consciousness or went into shock, which amazed everyone. I could still remember everything in perfect detail as the helicopter landed. I did begin to feel sleepy. They told me not to go to sleep and began running with me down the hallway in the hospital. I remember counting the lights on the ceiling as they whizzed by to stay awake. They said even though they were running with the gurney, which was soaked through with blood, that there was still a trail of blood on the floor all the way down the hall. They took me into the operating room and began to prepare me for surgery. The last thing I remember was the nurse putting the mask over my face, telling me to count backwards from 10. The last number I remember was 8. I then felt like I was walking backwards with my eyes closed. Then it felt like I bumped into a wall with my back. I opened my eyes to a very bright, although strangely not blinding, white misty light that covered everything. Slowly the mist started to move away and I saw myself lying on the operating table. It looked like I was many, many stories high and looking down on myself. I saw them working on me, and then I noticed. I heard, but not with my ears, more like with my spirit. Something like singing or voices speaking, but I couldn't make out any words. It was all around me. At this point, I turned around. That's when I saw the tunnel. It was like inside of a tornado. It was sucking the light and the mist into what all appeared to be warp speed. I had a feeling of total peace all throughout this experience. I started toward the tunnel in a motion, not like walking, more like floating. It seemed like as soon as I entered the tunnel, I was on the other side, uh, that quick. I noticed the same bright light and mistiness of the surroundings. I also noticed I wasn't alone. There were dozens of people standing in a horseshoe type formation of which I was standing in the center of when I exited the tunnel. I could not recognize anyone because I saw no features. They were more like figures and shadows. Then I was told no by a voice. Strange thing is, it was neither male or female, but it held an enormous amount of authority. Then I, with my stubbornness that I carry to this day, asked it, why can't I come home? I was promptly told, you cannot come home yet. I continued to try to go forward and they kept telling me no. Not yet, it's not your time. Then I felt compelled to turn around and look back at the tunnel. That was when I was transported back through and out the other side of it. I looked down and that's when I saw them bring that paddle machine over my body. I saw the doctors grab the paddle, say something to the person standing next to it. They turned some knobs and the doctor put them on my chest and hit me once with the shock. I saw my body jump and felt nothing. I then saw the doctor say something to them again. They moved the knobs again and hit me a second time nothing. Then I saw the doctor put the paddles together for a moment, as if saying a prayer, and then he said something to the person again. The person shook their head in disagreement, but went ahead at the doctor's insistence, and moved the knobs again. When he hit me the third time, I awoke in the intensive care unit. The doctor told my parents that I died. I was what they call sheet-faced, and then he took a chance by hitting me with the paddles a third time. He admitted to not being really a religious man, but he said he felt that he was being told not to quit, so he didn't. I was expecting to be in the hospital for at least two months, but I was home in ten days. I was called a miracle child on TV and the papers. I would not trade that experience for anything in the world. Many things have happened to me since, though. 
before that, I was able to see, smell, and feel spirits. I grew up in a haunted house. Since I've had the NDE, I seem to have several psychic gifts as well. I still have all the abilities with spirits, only stronger now, and I've had dreams that come true very often also. I've had a very strong gut feeling. Feelings that I can decipher as good or bad. I can also seem to sense other people's spirits as well. I think the Bible refers to this as the gift called deciphering of spirits. I was made to feel like I was crazy when I would try to speak to my family about the things that I was feeling at the time and about my NDE, so I subdued everything for many years. I have finally got friends and some family who are now encouraging me to work with my gifts again. Okay, here goes the dream part of the NDE. The reason I say dream part is that it seems to have taken place between the NDE and me waking up in intensive care unit. The dream began with me walking down the street, where I lived at the time, and it was night. I noticed two things. First, I was barefoot. I always was as a kid. And the second, that I was the only living thing around. What I mean by this is that there are no other birds, insects, animals, people, or even the wind. There were cars stopped in the street running, as if people just stopped and got out. And homes were lit up, as if people were there, but no one was. It was as if I were the only living thing on the planet. I went up to the porch to enter my home to look for my parents, brother and sister, and found no one at all, although lights and TVs were going like they were there. When I found no one home, I got a little scared and left the house to walk next door to my mama's house to see if they were there. As I walked through the front yard, it felt like something was biting and scratching at my feet. The feeling was so strong that I could actually feel the blood running down my feet. I ran from my yard to Mama's next door, only to find there was no one there either. By this time, I was very afraid and confused. I ran back to the street. I looked down the street to the four-way where there was a street lamp. At the back of the circle of light from the lamp, I saw a figure standing there. It was huge, very tall. I say it because I don't know if it was male or female. All I know, it was very tall. I dream in colors, so I noticed it was wearing a beige or off-white color robes that were very long and had shoulder-length dark hair. I remember thinking, thank god I'm not alone. I began to run towards the figure, but as I approached from the front of the circle of light, it raised one hand to stop me. It said, you are not alone. You never have been and you never will be. I told it that I want to go home, that I didn't want to be here. It said to me again, don't be afraid, you are not alone. The father says, you still have much to do and cannot return home yet. As I was objecting, it said again, not yet, and began to fade away. It seemed to have been sucked up by the street lamp. After it faded away, I awoke in the intensive care unit. Thanks for listening to the story. There is a lot more to learn about NDEs, so I recommend checking out the channel. There are some playlists that you could look at, and also a lot more stories. I am looking to change up the channel a little bit. I know that a lot of people didn't like the voice I was using before, and I'm trying to use my own voice, so I hope that's, uh, hope that's okay with you. I also have other plans for this channel, so I hope you stick around and enjoy the adventure with me. Also, I'd like to know what you think. Leave the comment below. Do you like this version of the video, or do you like my older versions? Um, I'd love to hear from you. As always, live long and live strong. Thank you.